If you're interested in why sometimes when you overexert yourself, you don't get enough sleep, you overexercise maybe in some way, you actually feel like you're more susceptible to inflammation and maybe even catching a cold or becoming run down, today's show will explain just that. All right, everybody, we are back. Brand new show here. Excited today. We're about to get into the weeds if you love to learn about the immune system. So we're going to really talk about exercise, immunity, and recovery, how they're all balanced together. And also, this is why I'm always preaching why bioindividuality really comes above everything else. Because some individuals, their immune system are a little bit stronger or a little bit weaker than others. It doesn't mean that they're more special or less special. We're all special. But what this does is actually take to look at um, how the immune system reacts to exercise. And when you think about exercise, don't just think about it as like a high intensity interval workout. Actually think about it as overexerting the body. So think about it as like doing more in your daily routine than you might be used to, traveling on an overnight flight, like anything that's exerting stress on the organism, which is your body. All right. So what I'm going to do, since it's like the, um, it is a extremely well done research article. So I read a fair amount of research in my time. This was one of the best papers that I've read on exercise in the immune system. So if you want to go deep, I invite you to do so. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2799 after the show. I will link it up. It's in the Journal of Applied Physiology. And especially if you have a background in health uh, or fitness, this might be right up your alley. But even if not, it's still approachable. You know, it gets in the weeds a little bit with the neutrophils and lymphocytes, et cetera. But I'm just going to call those. I'll tell you exactly what it is, the white blood cells right of the immune system. And I'll share with you how everything takes place. So it's my job to read the research, to understand what the science says. And then I say also, does this vibe with what I've seen in my practice for the past 25 years? Yes, in the research. Yes, for my practice. And also from all my learnings from Ayurvedic medicine, which is 6,000 years old of recorded history. Okay. Because if it matches modern day research with 6,000 year old Ayurveda, and it's also works in my clinical practice, it's a good bet that it's solid and it's going to work for you as well. And that's what I try to share. Okay. So let's dive right into it. Um, here it is. So exercise can actually, I'm going to cut right to the chase, weaken the immune system temporarily, unless overdone, and then it's actually for greater than a seven-day period of time. Let's go deeper. So when we think about exercise or we think about stress in general, we have to think about what's produced. The body's producing more stress hormones. It could be dopamine. It could be, which is neurotransmitter, norepinephrine, same. Could be cortisol, right, which is a glucocorticoid that's like, oh, we're under stress. We're going to produce more of these stress hormones in order to do what? Well, first one's norepinephrine, increase blood pressure, increase heart rate, get ready for the stressor, right? Start to move blood to the extremities. And and then also cortisol, hey, let's move sugar, glucose, stored glycogen to the bloodstream so that we have a fast fuel source. Okay, so we know all, all of that. But then also certain things begin to happen when the body is under stress. And I want to read that to you now. So the notion that prolonged intense exercise causes an open window of immunodepression during recovery after exercise is well accepted. So that means for years now, we've known that post-workout you actually suppress your immune system. Strange, but true. Repeated exercise bouts or intensified training without sufficient recovery may increase the risk of illness. However, except for salivary IgA, so basically, whenever you hear Ig, it just means immunoglobulin, and that's simply a white blood cell. The A is immunoglobulin A, and it's in all of the saliva, the nasal passages, right? Like the mucus, the mucosa down the digestive tract, and it's your first line of defense against viruses and bacteria. So that actually gets a little bit lower after a workout. Okay. Um, inconsistent markers of this immunodepression remains elusive, meaning like they're having difficulty finding it. But here's what they found. Exercise, although it can increase neutrophils and monocytes, it actually decreases lymphocytes. Why is this important? The lymphocytes are actually helping to break down viruses, bacteria, pathogens in the body, and eliminate them. That's an important one. We want to keep, I mean, you know, think about your lymph nodes, right? In your neck, they can get swollen, under your armpits, in the groin, behind the knees. We have all these lymph nodes, part of your lymphocytes, part of your lymph 
lymphatic system. All right. So, um, and then there's other effects with natural killer cells, uh, T cells, and CD8 T cells, reg cells, basically, for a lot of autoimmune based issues as well. All right. So, uh, let me, I don't want to get too deep into this, but this lymphopenia, so lessening of the white blood cells, can often reach levels typical of clinical lymphopenia, but the lymphocyte count is usually restored to both the resting and clinical normal within four to six hours of recovery. Okay, so now it's telling us for about four to six hours, you have a window of actually depleted immunity. After bouts of exercise, so a couple hours like hard exercise, natural killer cells which account for most of the exercise-induced lymphocytosis, may be 40% lower than the baseline value for up to seven days after exercise. So a really hard exercise session can set you back one week. Now, it's not all gloom and doom. Let me get to that. I'm just going to get through the science just a little bit more, and then I will go through what all of this means and how it may affect you. Okay, so let's go a little bit further. Uh... Exercise-induced fatigue exists on a continuum. That's what I love to say, bioindividuality. Repeated bouts of intense exercise on the same day or over several days may cause acute fatigue as indicated by an inability to maintain exercise workloads. What does that mean? It means that you might be an individual who does perfectly fine exercising two or three days in a row, but anything more than that, without a recovery day, you start to crash, you have more what? Irritability, brain fog, achiness, soreness, fatigue, etc. Right? You feel more inflamed. That is precisely what we're talking about. Okay, because your inability, you're not regulating inflammation properly. Recognition of the link between excessive exercise training and risk of illness has stimulated interest in the nutritional supplements and physical therapies to counteract immunodepression and restore immune function after exercise. Okay, so you start to go deep into what may be helpful. There were three things out of a, let's say it was 5,000 word paper, out of what was most helpful, and I wanna bring those three to you. Carbohydrates, believe it or not, again, it's something I've been talking about for years, why? Because I was one of these individuals, just keep in mind, I had Addison's disease, inability to produce cortisol. I had myalgic encephalomyelitis, basically walking around every single day feeling like you have the flu, it's terrible. I couldn't exercise because I would get wiped out. But there was not one doctor, not one doctor or practitioner when I was in my early 20s that could tell me why I would get wiped out after playing a basketball game with my friends or why this was happening in my body. They just said, well, you have Addison's disease. Well, you, you have you know, chronic fatigue, you have whatever. Okay, like, but what does that mean? Why? Nobody could tell me why. This research is now telling us why. So I knew for me and going forward, like, I, again, I'm, I'm someone that loves to exercise. Like, I love that. Now that I have overcome all of my disease states, right? Overcome the type 2 diabetes, the autoimmune, the Addison's, the myalgic encephalomyelitis, the POTS, the insomnia, the allergies, all the things that I had. I love to exercise now, but I still can't overdo it. That's what we're talking about bioindividuality. So for me, I realize I'll just cut to the chase, but I want to get back to these three things that really work. I can work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday with weights. Okay, so I can do every other day. I try oftentimes, because I always try, can I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, then Thursday, Friday? Can I get in one additional day? I can for a while, but if anything else, if anything else is off, not enough sleep, et cetera, you know, my body starts to become a little bit more inflamed. My specific genetics, my specific dosha, those types of things. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and typically on Saturday, I can then do cardio. So I'm doing something different. So I get in a lot of the things that I love, and it could be swimming, it could be biking, it could be doing my exercise with oxygen therapy, and I can do my sauna and all these great things. So I still get to do what I love, but I can play with it a little bit. Now, here's something I found in my 20s that always worked, and it allows me to work out hard. I would always bring a smoothie to my workout, and I would start to sip it right before my workout started and then through my workout. The smoothie was typically uh, wild, one cup of wild blueberries, which I still do to this day, and usually like a frozen banana or, or something else. And then I would put in my protein powder, 
I use the daily nutritional support, and I would add anything else that I wanted there. That that's basically it. And it would be it would be big. It's a liter. So basically, it's thirty ounces. I put in twenty ounces of water. I put in two cups of fruit, and I put in my daily nutritional support, and I just consume that. Well, I didn't know it. I didn't know why that was helping me. I didn't know why I wasn't getting the inflammation. I didn't know why like I could work out hard and really feel no ill effects from it. Well, here we go. Carbohydrate supplementation during prolonged intense exercise consistently attenuates exercise-induced increases in circulating cytokines and the redistribution of neutrophils, monocytes, natural killer cells, and lymphocytes. The immuno... Uh, modulatory effects of carbohydrates arise from better maintenance of blood glucose concentration and blunted release of stress hormones such as catecholamines and glucocorticoids during and after exercise. All right, let me put that back into English. Here's what it means. That when you consume carbohydrates, and again, I've said this for years, that's why it's, you know, doing 16 hours a day and skipping breakfast for intermittent fasting is detrimental for many people. Now, I'm a huge proponent of intermittent fasting. Uh, we, we have one of the top podcasts in intermittent fasting, literally, and we, we teach it from all angles. There are some people that don't do great with skipping breakfast. They do, might do better with stopping at eight o'clock and they could start their um, fast earlier the night before and that seems to be fine. So again, I'm not gonna go into that today, but carbohydrates are the only macronutrient, not fat, not protein, that blunt cytokines from stress. They blunt stress on the body. It's providing you with a glucose buffer, a cortisol buffer, and also a uh, in what's called an excitatory neurotransmitter buffer, like with norepinephrine. So really simple, 15 minutes. They, they actually, this is a beautiful paper, like I said, not one hour before, didn't work. It actually just messed with your blood sugar. But 15 minutes before, and if you want during your workout, it can just be 15 minutes before, consume a carbohydrate and protein solution. That's it. Like that's literally it. Now, they did also say, so again, get some carbs in there. Really, really important if you're dealing with this inflammatory or post-exercise inflammatory issue, um, but also protein. So they found post-workout, not more than an hour later, but you can do what I do, which is during the workout. So it's called peri, peri workout nutrition. So a little bit of pre peri workout and you're sipping it throughout. I finish mine by the end of my workout, one liter of water. So plenty of fluid and I put protein in there. Okay. doesn't need to be a ton, but then you want to get a meal afterwards as well, or, you know, more protein shake if you want, whatever works for you. I'm not going to give that advice today. So they found that for those people who are exercising, especially if there's muscle tissue breakdown or intense workout, you do need more than the standard 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight recommendation. So again, for the average individual, let's say they weigh 160 pounds, 160 times 0.8 for the day of protein would be, uh, sorry, it's in kilograms, all right? So we need to take 160, let's say that's your body weight, then divide that by 2.2, that's going to give you your weight in kilograms, which for this individual at 160, it's 72, 72.72. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.8. And that's going to give you a protein requirement for the day as your minimum amount of protein, which is 58 grams of protein for that individual. Now they found that people who do intense exercise or have, who have this poor recovery need more than that. So like an individual like myself, I weigh a little over 160, about 164. I don't do the 58 grams. I do more than that. Now, I don't, uh, there's other reasons why I don't do it for the one for one, uh, meaning one pound of body weight for one gram of protein. I talk about that in high performance health, but um, they need more and they need more after the workout as well. Now, the last part was supplementation. So carbs, some protein, but the carbs are actually the most important. The supplementation, they found this, make sure you're not deficient in iron, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12 in order to support immune function. And there's one more that I believe that they missed, and that's vitamin C. Without a doubt for immune function, you need vitamin C. Now, as a caveat to that, you don't really want to do your vitamin C or vitamin E in high dosages directly post-workout, which could blunt the repair-based process. So you can do your vitamin C earlier in the day if you want. Very easy, very simple, straightforward if your workout's later in the day or vice versa. Okay. The last part is this. They said to increase phytonutrients, plant-based antioxidants, fruits and vegetables, brightly colored fruits and vegetables. If you want to go a little bit higher, 
on the vegetable side instead of the fruit, that's up to you. But keep in mind, your carbohydrate could be your fruit at your workout, and now um, you're getting a two for one. Phytonutrients, brightly colored fruits and vegetables with your carbohydrates, pre-workout, peri-workout, and you have it all. So I think that this was amazing research. By the way, it's going to benefit who? Well, the people who just feel a little bit more inflamed after a workout, no doubt about it. But here's another thing. Like This is just as important. We all, as we get older, get a little bit more inflamed after a workout. Our immune system quite isn't what it was when we were in our teens and 20s. So this might be a solution that you look for as you want to keep up with your workouts, but uh, as you age as well, start to not necessarily drain the body of its energy by doing a lot of fasted workouts, but maybe we use a little bit of this peri-workout nutrition. Now there's a time and place, if you're totally fine, you feel good, there's no inflammation, there's no issues, and you're looking to lose weight, I do agree. I have a lot of podcasts on that as well, and you would want to potentially do a fasted workout. So it really matters what? About bioindividuality. My goal as an integrative health practitioner is to help those people that have not been given the help that they need. And so if there's any questions you have for me, feel free to put them in the comments below. Hopefully it will become a podcast for you in the future. I um, love being able to help. And on the weekends, I answer all those questions that ask Cabral. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Again, appreciate all the downloads, the subscribes, the likes. Do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it can serve. And don't forget to tune into our Friday review tomorrow, where I'm always giving you a brand new book review, product review, and even, even more additional research. Take care, buddy. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.